Now to Pennsylvania, where the races for both governor and Senate are also coming down to the wire. In the gubernatorial contest, our CBS News Battleground Tracker poll shows Democratic Attorney General Josh Shapiro is leading state Senator Doug Mastriano by nine points. That's down from a lead of 11 points just last month. And in the Senate race, Democratic candidate John Fetterman faced off against his Republican opponent, Dr. Mehmet Oz, in their only debate before the election. Before Election Day, I should say. Election's already happening. It's going on. The lingering effects of Fetterman's stroke five months ago caused him to struggle throughout the night, while Oz, Oz worked hard to distinguish himself from Republican efforts to pass a national abortion ban. Let's hear from both candidates. I absolutely support fracking. In fact, I live across the street from a, the, a steel mill, and they were going to frack to create their own energy in order to make them more competitive. And I support that, living closer to anybody else in Pennsylvania for fracking to myself. I believe that we need independence with energy, and I believe I've walked that line my entire career. There should not be involvement from the federal government. I don't want the federal government involved with that at all. I want women, doctors, local uh, political leaders, letting the democracy that's always allowed our nation to thrive, to put the best ideas forward so states can decide for themselves. For more on this, let's bring in CBS News Chief Election and Campaign Correspondent Robert Costa. Bob, ahead of this debate, CBS News released polling numbers asking voters if John Fetterman was healthy enough to serve following his stroke earlier in the year and 55 percent of the people in that survey said yes he was healthy enough now that this debate has happened and uh his performance in it has been discussed at least by the the analytical class what are you hearing from actual humans who will cast their votes in pennsylvania actual humans always the, <laughs> the desired target for a political journalist. And luckily, John, I had the chance to spend about five or six hours today talking to actual human beings, actual Pennsylvania residents, about whether they watched the debate. Turns out a lot of them did. Haven't seen the ratings yet. But think about this. The Philadelphia Phillies already in the World Series. The Eagles weren't playing. And so there was a, a little bit of an opening for a Pennsylvania television audience. And it seemed like, anecdotally, as I went around the Harrisburg area today with our team, that a lot of people watched it. And it was interesting that some people who were more on the fence about where they're going to vote, they felt pained about Fetterman, watching him struggle in their view on stage and, and deal with some of his recovery issues of the auditory issue. That's why he had closed captioning. Uh, but you see some voters saying at the same time, hey, they've told us we had strokes in our family. We, maybe they had, themselves had a stroke or are dealing with a health event or a health crisis, and they've gotten through it. They talked about uh, different ailments people have had and been able to serve in different jobs, and they believe Fetterman could serve fine in the U.S. Senate. Uh, but the issue is not going away, based on our conversation with voters. But at the same time, it's important to note that so many of the voters we spoke with also believe the economy, prices of fuel, prices of gas, that's top of mind for them, along with crime and abortion rights. And so is it your view, Bob, that, that you know, this is something they took note of, but that those issues you just mentioned, um, that they really see it as a sidelight to that. It really depends on who you ask. I mean, some Republicans see Fetterman is totally unfit for office. Sure. Fetterman's doctor has released a letter saying he is fit to serve. Fetterman has declined to release more than that letter from his doctor. Uh, but there were some voters who were Republican and some Democratic voters who expressed how I would put it unease, uh, not really sure how to feel about what they witnessed, knowing that Fetterman has been their lieutenant governor for years now. He was mayor of Braddock in western Pennsylvania, a small town. And they believe he's someone they know. He's, he's a known talent in Pennsylvania politics. And they may not love Dr. Mehmet Oz, especially if they're more centrist voters, liberal-leaning voters, Democratic voters. Uh, but at the same time, they express some unease about just seeing someone struggle publicly. Some people who said they're voting for Fetterman said they're not going to change their vote. But they wish Fetterman maybe took a little bit more time before he got on the debate stage. And it's, it's, a, it's a prism into how a lot of voters see things. Are they really policy-focused, issue-focused, or are they taking into account the personal experience? So let's talk about policy, which is uh, Dr. Oz had a, a number of instances during the debate in which he was trying to find his own place on abortion. You could see him. He didn't want to sign up to Senator Lindsey Graham's national uh, abortion restrictions. Uh, on the other hand, he gave a, an 
an artful uh, response about his his position on abortion, which was then mischaracterized online. So it, there's a lot going on there. What do you think is uh, is the net result of all of that with respect to abortion and Dr. Oz's position? It's evident that the Fetterman campaign, who I've been speaking with since last night's debate, along with the Oz campaign. The Fetterman campaign sees abortion as the issue they want to shine a spotlight on. They came out with a new ad today highlighting Dr. Oz's remarks on abortion. And you see them looking at the two, the two words Oz said specifically in those remarks. Local leaders, he said, as part of his answer on abortion. That is something Democrats believe will alarm some of their core voters who they need to turn out in a midterm election. They need the the younger voters, the older voters, the core Democrats in Philadelphia, in Pittsburgh, in central Pennsylvania to turn out. And abortion rights has been something Fetterman has underscored in so many events in recent weeks. And this exchange at the debate, along with Fetterman's re response, brings abortion to the forefront. And it's something Fetterman's allies seem much more keen to talk about than talking about Fetterman's health and his status and how he's doing with the stroke. Oz, in mentioning local leaders at all in a conversation that Fetterman is saying is only between a doctor and a woman uh, is what's gotten him into that, that thicket that he's in. Let me zoom you over to Michigan, if you wouldn't mind, Bob. The, the Democratic gubernatorial um, debate, Governor Gretchen Whitmer faced off against the Republican Tudor Dixon on Tuesday evening. In 1931, the state's anti-abortion law, it's on the ballot this cycle. And here's what Tudor Dixon had to say about that issue in their debate. The governor has the most radical opinion of abortion. She was asked twice in the last debate if she had any limits on abortion. She refused to answer because she has no limits on abortion. So when she calls me extreme, the truth is that there's no more extreme position than Governor Whitmer's on abortion. So there it is, the issue again, um, this time being used uh, by the Republican against the Democrat. It's also on the ballot, though. Uh, so how do you think, I mean, you may have an instance in Michigan in which post uh, the overturning of Roe versus Wade, abortion rights are actually affirmed by a state referendum. How do you think that all mixes with the gubernatorial race? It makes Michigan a bit different because there's a little bit more urgency when it's on the ballot. And I think back to what happened in Kansas over the summer. We've discussed that when in a relatively red state, almost ruby red state, Kansas, bolstered abortion rights in a vote over the summer, took a lot of people by surprise. Maybe abortion rights is more important to people uh, in red states than previously imagined by some political consultants. But what's notable is that it was on the ballot. And so in Pennsylvania, you have abortion rights being yanked to the fore of the discussion and the debate by John Fetterman, by others who want it there because they believe it's a galvanizing issue and an important issue. But in Michigan, if you're for abortion rights and it's on the ballot, Talk about a turnout mechanism for the Democratic base in Michigan and for those on the Republican side or independents who also support abortion rights. And that makes it much more of an issues focus potentially in Michigan rather than a candidate driven race. Exactly. Bob Costa, thank you for helping us sort through all of that in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Thanks, Bob.